Hello， 大家好，欢迎收看我们今天的节目，我是 Felicia。那今天呢，在我们的现场为你邀请到了一位特别的来宾。那这一位呢，非常帅的帅小伙，在今年要 run for 加州的参议员。Hello, Vincent. Hi, you speak Chinese? Yeah, just a little bit. You know, my name is my name is Cai Wanqing. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah, that's scary. And also, I know you can speak a little bit Taiwanese, right? You know, my name is Cai Wanqing. Super smart. That I know you grew up in this area, right? Yeah, in the Luo Shan region. Oh, but you can still speak Chinese. That's really great. So your parents and mother are Taiwanese? Yeah, they're from Taiwan. We know in California now the crime is just going crazy. Like people are like smashing the stores and they're like stolen stuff and they never pay anything back. So what do you see as a police officer? You are always like fighting in the front line. You're gonna see more than us. So can you tell us what do you see about that and how can we solve that problem? What I see right now is criminals mm -hmm. have no fear about breaking the law because yeah. they know that they're not gonna get in trouble for it. They know that they're probably not gonna get arrested. They're just gonna get a ticket, side and release. Or if they do get locked up, they're going to be released from jail in a couple of days. I I can't tell you how many times mm -hmm. I've arrested somebody. Yeah. And then they're back on the streets in two days, and it, and you see in them on the second days? corner. Yeah. It happens all the time. What that's doing is that's emboldening criminals, yeah. and it's also making my law enforcement partners kind of lose a little bit of faith. Like, yeah. we're we're doing the best job we can. Yeah. But it's not effective because the same guy we arrested is back on the streets. Yeah. So how can we solve these issues? In Sacramento, I want to write legislation to repeal Prop 47, which is the proposition that made it a misdemeanor if criminals steal something $949 or below. Yeah, that's why I see so many smash and grabs. People know they can go in and steal one dollar less than $950、yeah. and not get in any kind of trouble. So we need to stop that. We need to change the narrative from cops being bad people that arrest people for no reason to hey, cops are out there to protect you.、Mm -hmm. We do a job that's a thankless job. Yeah. We have a huge portion of the public here in California that are against us, but yet every day we put our lives on our line to go pr protect and serve the public.、Mm -hmm. There's every single shift, officers go out and they think to themselves, "Am I going to make it back home tonight? Am I going to see my family again?" This is something that all cops deal with, but yet we go out there and we do our jobs. So we need to, we need to change the narrative when it comes to law enforcement. All cops aren't racist. Yeah, there's there's a few bad apples. There are some bad cops. There are、yeah. some cops that are racist, but overwhelmingly, cops don't care about the race. You pull somebody <laughs> over is because they violated some kind of traffic law, or their registration is expired, or if somebody's committing a crime,、yeah. then of course we're gonna go stop it. Yeah. And most of our calls are calls for service. So somebody that means somebody called nine one one and said, "Hey, this person is acting suspiciously," or "Hey, somebody broke into my house," and then we respond. Yeah. So race has very little to do with any of that. When we get a call, we go there,、mm -hmm. and if there's somebody breaking the law, then we're going to do what we can to protect the public from that person. But why they're releasing in two days? Like, who made the decision? Because of people like DA Gascon. Gascon. Yeah, it's it's he's he, he has his fingerprints all over it. So it's because of him that we're allowing criminals to walk free. So a a lot of arrests right now aren't even being prosecuted. So you have somebody, you have a bad guy that gets arrested, and. It's not he, he that that person's not even being prosecuted, so he's being released right away. And that's because of Gascon. Oh. On top、wow. of that, he's reducing sentences for very violent offenders, so murderers, rapists. They're getting reduced sentences, so cop killers are getting reduced sentences because of Gascon, meaning that they're going to be released from prison way sooner than they were supposed to. It's getting to the point where we we have recordings in jail、mm -hmm. of. Inmates saying that they want to get Gascon's name tattooed on their forehead because they're going to be released way earlier because of Gascon. So why is it that somebody in office that's supposed to be protecting its citizens is making things better for criminals、yeah. and completely disrespecting、mm -hmm. victims and their families? Yeah. By releasing these same offenders back into the public, and guess what? They're going to commit the same crimes or worse when they get released. That's that's a, that's the trend I've been seeing.、Mm -hmm. The people that have been released from the jails, they get released. A couple of days later, rearrested again for the same crime or worse. It happens over and over and over again. How, how that happened, right, George Gascon? I think he might know he's doing the wrong thing, right? Everyone know police officers, people in the community, but why George Gascon still doing this? 
Do you want to go down the rabbit hole, or do you want me to give like a short political answer? Because there's a lot that goes into this. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a very complicated. Very complicated, and it goes beyond Gascon. So, and th this is all stuff that I used to think was cons conspiracy theory until I decided to look into things more. And and, yeah. and once I started running for office, I started doing a lot of research. Uh -huh. And what I found is is that it goes way beyond the the, the puppets. So people like Joe Biden, people like our Governor Newsom, people like Gascon, yeah. they're the low-level puppets. The puppet masters pulling the strings are people like George Soros, the so-called philanthropist billionaire oh. that funds and gets liberal DAs like Gascon mm -hmm. in office all across the United States. So it's not just George Gascon. If you look at the most liberal cities with the highest crime rates, mm -hmm. with the most amount of criminals being released from jail, they're DAs that were put there by George Gascon. And this is part of the big globalist push towards disorder and chaos so they can make what's called the one world government. So right now there's a push by not just one entity. People think that it's just one person, one organization. It's not. It's Soros. It's the CCP. Mm -hmm. It's Klaus Schwab, the, the founder of the WEF, the World Economic Forum. Yeah. It's people like Peter Daszak of EcoHealth Alliance. It's the Bilderberg Group. There's a consortium of elites that come together at meetings like the World Economic Forum and what, what they're pushing for is mm -hmm. for complete control over the entire world. So have the entire world under one government using one digital currency, which is why you see cash being accepted less and less now. Yeah. They're trying to make it a cashless society so that everybody's under the social credit system, meaning that all transactions have to be approved by the government mm -hmm. or, or tracked by the government. Our behaviors, our, our social media posts, our political leanings all give us a credit rating like the, like the social credit system they have in mm -hmm. China. So that the compliers have more freedoms than non-compliers like myself have a lower credit score. If you have a lower credit score, you're not allowed the freedoms that we currently have, such as the ability to go out and buy things, the ability to travel, the ability to purchase a home. All those things are going to be taken away from us. And it's already happening. You look at New York recently. They instituted their, their version of a social credit system for gun owners. They're starting off targeting gun owners. But eventually, the social credit system is going to apply to all of us. And so this is a part of, of a bigger global cabal that's looking to take control of our country, which is why you see COVID being weaponized, which is why you see our guns being taken away from us, our gun rights. Yeah. It's because they want to weaken us and have complete control over us so that whatever they say will do. So that's, that's the bigger picture. It's the globalists that are really in control. They want to control us and also our children. There's a, there's a reason why mm -hmm our education system is broken. The teachers' unions are the most powerful union in California. A huge part of the responsibility, it's, it's, it's on them. So if you look at California, how much money we spend on education, I mean, among the highest in the country, mm -hmm. but yet California ranks across the board among the lowest mm -hmm. in the country when it comes to education. So our, our system here in California has, has failed our children. Not only are, are teaching kids crazy things like critical race theory mm -hmm. and you know, CSE, which is Comprehensive Sex Education, which is teaching yeah. kids about transgender issues and just confusing kids. But on top of that, they're not teaching kids how to be critical thinkers. So the reason why I pulled my son out of school is because they're teaching kids what to think and how to think. Kids aren't being taught how to think critically, how to think creatively, mm -hmm. how to problem solve. Yeah. So we need to have a revamping of the whole education system towards a way that will allow children to, to be able to use their own best judgment and think critically and keep politics and religion out of school. Yeah. My, my son's fourth grade teacher was telling his class, you know, these are fourth graders, mm -hmm. nine, 10 years old, that she thinks Joe Biden is the greatest president ever and that he should be reelected and that she hopes every, all of them get vaccinated so, so that everybody will be safe. <laughs> that kind of stuff has no room in a yeah. classroom, especially with kids. They're taking impressionable minds and brainwashing them. They're, they're indoctrinating children right now. So, so the bigger picture with the education system also is that they're, the, the left is actively putting p children against their parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're allowing children to get hormone therapy without parental consent or knowledge. Yes. SB 866 mm -hmm. is still trying to be passed in the legislature because mm -hmm. politicians are trying to take away the power of the parent to decide medical decisions for the children by allowing children to get the COVID vaccine without parental consent or knowledge. So there's an active attempt by the left to separate parents from their children, to mm -hmm. try to pit the parents or the children against their parents. And 
the government has no right to co-parent with us. Right. As parents, we, we should have full autonomy over how we choose to raise our kids. The government has no say how we should be raising our children and what they should be exposed to. California school systems are failing. I mean, the test results are so low for, for, for schools in California. Mm -hmm. Whatever we're doing is obviously not working. So if something's not working, why are we continuing to do the same thing to elect the same people in office? Yes. We need to do something different. I mean, we, we all know that the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So why are we as a country, as a state, continuing to promote this insanity by n not changing anything? Mm -hmm. So we need new people in office to keep teachers accountable about what they're teaching and to push for legislation that'll prevent schools from teaching kids crazy things like CRT and CSE. Yeah. You mentioned that legislation, someone is really crazy in California Senate, like Scott Wiener. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people with him. Now they're pushing to change the California Constitution because they want women have the abortion rights. 84 people to support that. When you got there, you're going to facing those bunch of people because you have the different opinion with them. Mm -hmm. So are you afraid of that? No. I I look forward to that. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the main reasons why I wanted to run for office is because I see how smug politicians are with mm -hmm. coming out with all these crazy bills and they keep getting away with it. And there's a smugness that comes with it because right now they feel like they're invincible and they can get away with whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough people there that are speaking out against them and, and, and providing some kind of resistance. Because even Republicans now are softening up and they're becoming rhinos and they're, and they're voting in line with Democrats. Yeah. And I just see a lot of spinelessness. And so I relish the opportunity to go there and take the fight to them face to face and let them know, hey, what, what you're doing is wrong. And there's going to be people that are going to be pushing back. And here I am. Let's, let's have a conversation and, and see what you're trying to pass. Let me see your reasoning. And here's why I disagree. And that's what we need more of in Sacramento and Washington, D.C. There's too many politicians on both sides that just go along with, with the status quo because they don't have the courage to stand up and fight for what's right. And so candidates like myself and, and Michael McMahon are looking to get into office because even though we're going to be outnumbered, there's, there's going to be a small, small percentage of us mm -hmm. battling the, the huge percentage of all those crazy people in yeah. office right now. But we became cops because we run towards the sound of gunfire. So we don't run away from danger. Mm -hmm. We don't run away from confrontation. We're going to go embrace the, the, the challenge and see if, we, see if we can find a solution. And yeah, I'm in their world because they're all career politicians. They know how to play the game. But what they're doing obviously isn't working. And so my goal is to go in there and create a new way of, of running government. I, I'm just one person and I'm looking to create some small change that will grow into bigger change because the way things are right now yeah. is obviously not working. Yeah, obviously not working. Yeah. We can see the south border. There are a lot of like immigrants that are lining up and they're waiting getting into the US. Mm -hmm. So what do you see about that? So my parents came oh. here like all other immigrants because they wanted a chance at a better life. Yeah. They saw a lot of opportunity in America, but they came here and they did things the right way. Mm -hmm. They went through the process, they got their green card, they suffered through being abused by their employers because they had green card uh, um, status and so they were overworked. But instead of complaining and asking for help and asking for government uh, assistance, my parents endured that suffering mm -hmm. and did things the right way and eventually earned their citizenship. And I say the word earn because that's what it's about. I'm not against immigrants. Yeah. This country was built on, on the immigrant community. Mm -hmm. But I'm for doing things the right way. So if you want to come to this country, great. This, we're a land of the free. You can come here and be whatever you want to be. But do things the right way and earn the right to be here. Go through the proper process and earn your way. Mm -hmm. what, what we're seeing with the border crisis right now, and it is a crisis, is yeah. we're being overrun. So it wasn't covered in any major media outlet. I don't even think alternative media outlets covered it. But recently, um, Elected officials and sheriffs in Texas came out and had a press conference mm -hmm. asking for help because they've been invaded by migrants. It's, it's, it's gone to the point where they've been overrun by immigrants coming in. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are coming in and getting free hand outs So they're coming over, dis disregarding any of the process they have to go through to be a, a legal immigrant here. 
and coming here and expecting free stuff. I mean, they're getting subsidies from the government. They're, they're getting taxpayer-funded things for free. Mm -hmm. And that sets a bad precedence. First of all, giving people the idea that they could come here and not to earn their way mm -hmm. is completely wrong. We have people that are here legally that are working their butts off just to be able to provide their families, but yet we're giving away stuff for free to people. Yeah. And so I, I believe in doing things the right way, and everybody has a right to the American dream. My parents are happily retired now mm -hmm. because they came here, did things the right way, and put in the hard work. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they have a respect for America and its constitution. And people that think they just come over here and do whatever they want and get stuff for free, they don't have a respect for our constitution. They don't have a respect for the, the history of our country. Yeah. They're still going to come here and, and freeload, and I'm 100% against that. And I want to do what I can in Sacramento to provide support to our border cities in Texas and even here in California yeah. and to prevent this onslaught of the invasion of, of immigrants because it's, it's not sustainable. It's chaos down there right now. Mm -hmm. And the federal government, local governments aren't doing anything about it. But if enough of us in office make it a stand and make it a point to fight that battle, I think we can make some change there everything just are getting worse. So we have to elect the right people and go into whatever the federal or the state to represent us. So can you tell me, how can we help you? I don't have a campaign team. I'm mm. still doing it on my own. So how people can help is, whether you're in my district or not, spread the word. So let everybody know about my campaign. Let people know about what's going on. There's still a lot of Californians, a lot of Americans that don't know what's going on. They don't know where we're being invaded by the CCP. They don't know that we're being controlled by globalists that are trying to take away our rights one by one. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is educating people because if people can't act unless they know that there's, some, that there's something that needs to be acted on. Mm -hmm. So go out, spread the word, donate to my campaign. You can find a link to donate to my campaign on my website, sci, the number four, senate.com. Once I have campaign materials produced again, because I give away all my stuff during the primaries. So once I have new campaign materials out, I encourage you to go on my website, click on, click on the volunteer link, and go walk the neighborhoods for me. Mm -hmm. Because I, I tried covering my district on my own during the primaries, yeah. and it was just me and my son walking the neighborhoods. But now I need people to step up, and if you believe in this fight, if you believe in my mm -hmm. campaign, take action. So help me out by requesting campaign materials, and go walk your neighborhoods. Go hand them out to, your, to people in the community. Go, go talk to people in the community about me. Let them know that, hey, there's somebody out there that's fighting for you. You're not alone. I know a lot of people feel alone. Let people know that you're not alone. There's somebody that's out there fighting for you that's not a politician that's looking to get into office mm -hmm. to fight for you. Mm -hmm. But in order to get enough votes and in order to get enough people to know about me, I need people to walk the neighborhoods for me. 走到那边会里面，让每一个人都知道他的证件到底是什么，为他来拉票。我相信这一次不光只有他，还有他的儿子一起去敲门，然后让大家来认识他。也欢迎大家一起来转发我们这一集视频，因为大家看到这就是我们